Okay. Oh, well, we only have oh, 41 minutes. Okay. Hi, Josh and Sam. Sam. So, I need to erase the board, which I should have done. We see those every week. You're okay. Aww. So, this week is Team Pack, Sam. So, we're videoing for more than just you right now. Um, okay, so the photoelectric effect, very, very confusing, but not hard. Okay, so the photoelectric effect is when light of a specific wavelength uh, frequency is shined on metal. Metal, um, if it's the right frequency, metal is going to give off electrons. Um, so, uh, the work function. I want you to think about work function like this, okay? Um, work. The work function of a given... Um, metal is how tightly the metal is going to hold on to its electrons, kind of like um, electronegativity in chemistry, right? So think of a little kid with some candy, okay? They have a really strong work function. It's very, very difficult to remove the candy from the small child, right? And when you actually do pull it away, then you have a certain amount of energy, right? So um, if an electron gets more energy than the work function of its metal, it'll give off electrons, okay? Depending on how much more energy, uh, then it tells you how much, um, what's the maximum amount of energy that the electron can have. So let's look, let's write something on the board. Okay, so if you have two pieces of metal, I wrote this incredibly small. Okay, so here's one piece of metal, it has a big work function. I should have drawn this bigger. FCN is function. Um, and then we have another piece of metal with a little work function. Okay. So, now Einstein, um, I don't know. That's not what I want to say. All right. So then we look at this. Energy is, um, is proportional to frequency, uh, with uh, Planck's constant being the, I cannot think at all today, constant. Planck's co constant is the constant that relates the two. Okay, so what we're going to assume when we're talking about work function is that light is made of photons. What is a photon? It's a little part of it. Of light. Okay, so like a particle. Not to be confused with particle. Or a little <laughs> packet of energy. Okay, a photon is like a finite amount of something, too. Um, just like when you have a molecule, you can't have two and a half carbon atoms and one oxygen atom in a molecule, right? Each atom is a finite packet of stuff. You can have two, or you can have three, or you can have four, but you can't have half of an atom, right? We, you have packets of light, um, and they are like finite amounts, not half of a photon or something. I um, guess depending on whether or not you're in a nuclear facility, that could be disputed as to whether you can have half an atom. True. Well, then you just have not an atom anymore, but pieces. Like an electron is a piece of an atom, and we can, well, here in a couple of weeks, we're going to make them move all over the place by themselves without their atoms. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Well, that's electricity. Oh, okay. Great. Right. <laughs> Nothing oh, like new or just so moving cool. electrons. It is cool, though. It sounded cool when you said it. Yeah. Static electricity, soon, it's fun, and then actual wires of electricity. But, um... I, I like the electricity stuff a lot, actually, uh, and it's really fun. I, I need to order some more light bulbs, though, so everybody can put their hands on it, because I don't know if I have enough to build, like, three circuits of multiple light bulbs. But, anyhow, no interrupting the work function, because it's complicated. Okay, so, if you have a big work function in brown, is it going to take more or less energy for an electron to escape this guy? More. 
Okay, more energy required to liberate electrons. This means electron for me because I don't like to write the word electron out. Okay, so little kid with very tight fisted grip on their electrons. Big work function, okay? How much work can it do? It can hold on very tightly, right? Then, uh, obviously, conversely, the little work function metal will liberate it much more easily, right? So which one would have the, high, uh, the highest minimum frequency uh, to give off electrons? So, what if you know this needs more energy than this to liberate electrons, then what kind of frequency will it take? So how are energy and frequency related to each other? Mm -hmm. Directly. Directly proportional, right? So if it needs more energy, then it's going to need... Higher frequency. Higher frequency. Okay, little work function. A lower <coughs> frequency of light will liberate electrons. Okay. So we should probably like look at some problems. Um, also you should remember that electron volts are uh, energy units. Just like joules, only smaller. Like a equal to one point two oh nine times ten to the negative nineteen joules. Really smaller. Yes. Okay, so can I ask a question about one of the examples? Yes, absolutely. We can do any okay. problem. Else. It's um, 11.4. And what is it? Oh, here, I actually labeled them. Yay, me. Go ahead. Okay. Oh, so, okay, so this is like a Doppler effect sort of problem. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so when they got down to the part where it was E equals HF, Mm -hmm. I don't know where they got the 14 or 4.14 times. That's the Planck's constant. Look yeah. like they four lines apply. up from the top of example 11.4. Over here. This is on your own 11.4? Okay. No, no the example. example in the book. Oh. I need the book. Okay. So should we learn the conversion or just what you get afterwards? 4.14 times 10 to negative 15. Because that's the idea. Oh, oh I feel that I figured out this morning. So what are you, what are you asking? What do you need to memorize? Your test says Planck's constant in electron volt seconds on the top of the test. Yeah. Okay. okay. Right. What? What does it say? Planck's. It says h equals four point one four times ten to the negative fifteen electron volt seconds. So it gives you h on the top of the test. Okay, and then I was also that's wondering. Um, how do you convert from meters to nanometers? Okay, so okay, meters like, to I nanometers. I assume you let's, already know how to do that. Yeah. And I was like, let's I look don't. at a problem where you do that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, and, and in fact, you can easily type that into your calculator really wrong. And I mean, it's, it's very easy to make a mistake if you don't know how to use your calculator to do that. So we'll look at problems. Nano is 10 to the negative 9. 10 to the negative 9. But. Like most when they're giving like hundred nanometers and right. it's like five point two whatever times ten to the negative seven meters. Right. So if you have eight hundred and sixty nanometers, right, mm -hmm. then when you convert to scientific notation, obviously you move two places here, right? Mm -hmm. So this would be eight hundred and sixty times ten to the negative nine. Um, meters, but really what it is is 8.60 times 10 to the negative 7 meters because you've already moved those two places. Okay. Okay. So when it says at the top of your test, nanometer means 10 to the negative 9, you don't want to say, oh, well, it's just 8.60 times 10 to the negative 9 meters because that's not accounting for the two places that you already moved the decimal to get the decimal point in the right place for scientific notation. Okay. So that's like the obvious mistake. Did I do that right? Because yeah. I've been known to move my decimal in the wrong direction. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So, what sh actual people's okay. arms have come through that hole today. Really? So I'm just saying. <laughs> That's Don't awesome. be surprised at anything. We actually thought a squirrel might be visiting, but it was person, so that was good. I don't really want a rodent at all. Dropping into the room. Killing a raccoon. <laughs> it's not biology. 
Okay. So, are, do you all want to do a Doppler effect problem, or do you feel happy with Doppler effect problems? I think so. Because we should have time. We do lots of problems. But I want to focus on the work function problems and the... Um, what problems did we do last week? Did we do number seven last week? For the practice problems? Yes. Yes, we went up to we seven. Did we did seven. Okay. So just use common sense when you do those problems. Think, okay, if the sound, if you're stationary, right, here's you, and the sound is, well, I'll make you a point. The sound is moving towards you, then what is happening? What how, what would you expect to happen to the pitch of something? It would be higher. Okay, because your velocity is being added to the sound waves going this way and lower. So if you're going to have a higher, what, wavelength frequency? Um, what controls the pitch of a sound? Frequency. The wavelength. Higher wavelength of sound here, you're going to have a higher pitch. And if you're going to have a lower wavelength over here, you have a lower pitch, right? So just think about your problem at the end and decide, well, did it actually work out that way? You know, do is what I expect common sense-wise actually happening, or have I done my little plus and minus thing wrong? Also, if you write the equation and memorize it, if you're like I am and you really need to seriously write down the equation on top of your test at the beginning because you can't <laughs> you can't think under pressure. That's what my problem is. Thinking under pressure is very, very challenging for me. See, I can't do it now. Um, I have a great way that I wrote on the board last week that I, here, this is what I have to write. If I were going to take this test personally, I would sit down and memorize this and I would have to write it this way. Okay, the frequency that you observe is V sound plus or minus V observer divided by V sound plus or minus V source, and that's times the true frequency, F true. Now, what I always have to do is make myself a note, okay, if, if the observer is moving toward the source, then you do plus up here. And if the sound is moving away, you do plus down here. Now, I just have to write that, memorize it, put it at the top of my test, and then, sadly for me, think about it. Because I don't actually have the common sense intuition to understand intuitively how to do that. So, that's how I memorize the equation. Make sure that you know what works for you. Do the extra practice problems and make sure you know how to use that equation so that it makes sense in your head. But I have to have that right in front of me every time I do these problems. Um, and for the bottom one, do you, by sound, do you mean the source? If the source of the sound is moving, yeah. Like if you're stationary and the source of the sound is coming towards you, or if you're both moving and the source of the sound is coming towards you. Okay. So, how many review questions did we do last week? Like all of them? Mm -hmm. We, we kept going. Yeah, I, think we did, we did. I think we did all of them. Okay, so let's look at the last couple of practice problems. Let's look at 8, 9, and 10, and then we'll go back if we have time and think about some other things. Number 8 says the wavelength of indigo light is 442 nanometers. Do you guys know off the top of your head what the visible spectrum's range is? 400 to 700? 400 to 700, thereabouts. So purple is at the small end of that, and red is at the big end of that. Um, let's see, and that's a good thing to know. 
uh, what is the frequency? So you have the wavelength. What is the frequency? So what equation will I use? Okay, so we have wavelength. Uh, we want to know frequency and energy. So wavelength here is 442 nanometers. Uh, how many meters is that? 4.42 times 10 to the negative 7th. Okay, good. And what's the velocity? Come on, Josh, you know this. Oh, 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Okay, so frequency is going to be that divided by the wavelength 4.4 to 10 to the negative 7 meter, which is what? Okay. 6.8. I know y'all did these problems. 6.8 times 10 to the 14th. That's not what I got. Anyone else get that? I got that. Oh, this is That's eight. not the answer. the answer for number 9. <laughs> That's and what's my unit? Um, hertz. 1 over second. 1 over hertz. second is equal to hertz. So either one is fine. Um, and energy. So what equation will I use for energy? I'm crazy. Mm -hmm. E equals? Or HF. 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 Okay. And of course, like constant you use it in different units in chemistry, so I will never come up with that. 4.4 so times 10 to the negative 15. What um, is it? 4.14 times 10 to the negative 15. Electron volts per second. Okay. Times second. So think just like joules, okay? Like, except different it's units converted. Instead. Times the camera's dead? No, I said it's tiny instead. Tiny, tiny, very tiny. Um, times, is the camera still running? Yes. Okay, good. Um, we had, I filmed chemistry because of team tech, and the camera's battery died once, and the um, memory card filled up once. So we had a really bad filming experience. Okay, frequency, 6.8 times 10 to the 14 hertz. And what do we get? Um, Obviously the second and the hertz cancel each other out. 2.8 electron volts. Is that what I got? Yeah. Is that what everyone else got me got? Yeah, that's what I got too. And two significant figures, good for that, guys. That's good. Okay. So, number nine, we might have to talk about for half a minute. Number nine, the work function of gold is 5.31 electron volts. What is the lowest frequency of light that will result in electrons being liberated from the metal? So, find frequency, then you find wavelength because it asks for it. If light of that wavelength is lower than the wavelength shown on the metal, would electrons be liberated? Okay, so three things to think about in this problem. Can I raise this one or do we still need it? So think work function is how tightly the metal is holding on to its electrons. Okay, so we're shining light. We want to know if we can use this certain frequency or any wavelength the lower. So remember our visible spectrum is 400 to 700 nanometers, right? So what it's asking here is light of a wavelength lower than the one we come up with. Will that still liberate anything? Okay. So first off, first question is, what is the lowest frequency? So what is my equation? E equals HF. Okay. So the uh, work function is 5.31. So and I can't see. Okay. And what's Planck's constant again? 4.14 times 10 to the negative 15th. Okay, so what do I get for frequency? 
Um, 1.28 times 10 to the 15 hertz. 15? Do I have a second? I second. How oh, we can get governmental terms. I object. I don't really, it's correct. I'm so confused. Uh, I'm easily confused. So funny. Okay, so if I have frequency, how do I find wavelength? Um, the velocity, frequency equals velocity over lambda thing. Okay, and how are frequency and wavelength related to each other? <coughs> Inversely proportional. Okay, that's important here in a minute. Okay. So, so. you flip them and divide speed of light by frequency. Okay. Um, 230 nanometers. Or how else could you write that just in case? 2.30 times, or no, it's two significant digits, so um, 2.3 times 10 squared, or 10 to the negative 9 meters. 7. 7, yes, thank you. We just talked about this and I just... So it'll it always basically be 10 to the negative 7. If it's visible light. If it's visible light. Because there's plenty of electromagnetic radiation in the world that's way outside of this. Okay, so on the little chart, they had radio waves as light waves. Yeah. So how do we hear the light waves? Well, because the radio. just like you hear sound waves, radio waves can be converted with a machine to something you can hear. They're just converting the wavelength from whatever a radio wave is that complies with the air to a sound waves of, you know. It's That's the machine so converts, cool. yeah. Just like a TV converts the light, you know, the whatever signal it receives to light patterns that you can see. It's amazing. I mean, it's amazing. It really is. But you're like, I'm hearing light. Well, you're just hearing light that's been converted to, I mean, it's transmitting as a meaningful signal that a machine converted audio to radio and then another machine converts the radio back to audio. I know. Can you imagine how people thought of this? It's just amazing. Um, they were smart people. Much yeah, smarter and, than us. Well, I don't know. Some of you guys could definitely make some pretty great discoveries. And I hope, especially, that some of our electricity studies will inspire you to look at clean energy and think of ways to deal with our oil problems. Or not deal with our oil problems. I had a few students from my first year that I seriously hope go into that field because we really need some better energy options in this world. Um, but anyhow. Have you ever seen a sign that says, oh, who needs oil? I ride a bus. Uh, There's like some picture of somebody holding up a sign or something. Amazingly, Never. the bus uses petroleum products of some kind. Unless it's an electric bus or like a. There's like one of those. Still. How stupid are you? <laughs> okay, so if we know now our wavelength, <laughs> then what's our last question? If the wavelength of that light is I'm lower than the wavelength about. shown on metal, would electrons be liberated? Okay, so if we have 230 nanometers, is that visible? Uh, no. 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 Okay, so if, if wavelength is inversely proportional to frequency, if we decrease the wavelength, what will happen to frequency? It will increase. And if we increase the frequency here, what's going to happen? It will increase. Okay, so can we use a higher frequency to liberate electrons? Um, yes. Yes. Okay, because the work function works this way, okay? You have to have at least this much energy to liberate electrons. Okay, this is what it takes. A higher frequency will increase the energy, so more electrons, or not more electrons, but electrons will still be liberated with a lower <coughs> wavelength because it's a higher frequency. And the higher, the way work function works is that there's a threshold, okay, of frequency. Anything higher than that will still liberate electrons, but anything lower than that will not at all. Just not at all. Okay, so here are my questions. Do I want to ask that? Not yet. Let's do number 10.
does everyone understand that though? I mean, that's just a memory thing. Okay, if you have a bigger frequency, then it will have more energy and it's greater than the energy needed to liberate electrons. So that will always work. But you just have to pay attention to the inverse relationship here. A lower wavelength will be a higher frequency. So last one, and then we'll try to talk through work function about 400 other ways so that we Ooh, understand it. We should try to get, like, one, like, um, make to find the frequency of glass or something so we can, like, shatter a glass. Hmm. No. Can people really sing a note that can shatter glass? You know, I've always wondered. I'm not sure. I think that it's kind of possible. I mean, you can march across a bridge and hit the resonant frequency and crash the bridge down if you have a whole army marching. Oh, that's cool. Have it, well, if it's like a really thin like piece happen? of glass. Who's the history person in here? Didn't something like that happen well, during um, the war? I don't know about people, but like the... There was like that one bridge, like Tacoma or something. Oh, that, like, yeah. The wind shook it. Yeah, it's I like. I remember that. Oh, yeah, I saw the like, video. It's like. There's like some guy just like walking. And a guy went back for his dog in his car. Did you mm. see that video? Yeah. The That's dog sad. survived. And then it's just like. I don't know about the person. Oh, at least the dog did. <laughs> yeah. Very heroic. That, that, yeah, that was ridiculous. You have a soul that will last forever, and your dog doesn't, so make a good choice there. But still, that bridge was like, it was like a wave. It was really weird. I can't I think about it. it. That is pretty amazing. But yes, I think that it's possible. I don't know if a human being could produce enough power. Maybe if it was really, really, to. really thin glass. You know how they have like those, uh, the uh, yeah, those things where it's like, uh, where you can't hear it. It's like high enough that you can't hear it right. low enough. Well, if you like put that into like some big speakers or something like that, with that, there should some some types of glass probably have a frequency that is a pitch that a human could sing that would break it. But I don't know. I, there's some volume component there too, an amplitude of the wave, not just a frequency or a wavelength from the wave. And I just don't know if a person can do it. I'm sure there are lots of fake YouTube videos, and I think Myth Mythbusters did something on that once, but I don't remember what happened. But there is a Mythbuster about that, so you could look, because surely they know if anyone does, right? Mm -hmm. So, is it possible that, like, sounds can burst your eardrum even if yes. you can't hear them? So, if there's like a bajillion dog whistles going all at once, <laughs> like, could that burst? I don't know, because I don't know what the what the super yeah. vibrating um, like pitch it's still of... Sound. It might it give you still sound. Earache. My uncle, he, he caught a baseball in his, like, in his, a glove by his ear, and the, like, impact of it, and he went deaf in that ear. Oh, my. Huh. And it never healed? Because one of my kids had a ruptured eardrum, and it healed, and she yeah. couldn't hear at all when it ruptured, but then once it healed, she could hear fine. Yeah, um, well, one, one of my, my teachers, that happened, and they, she couldn't hear for, like, like a little bit under a week and it healed or something like that. My mom got hit by lightning when she was a girl. <laughs> really? Um, That's yeah. Terrible. She was sitting in a wrought iron chair next to an open window and um, she was deaf for like a week or so and then she could hear again but um, her hearing was never the same. What did it feel like? Oh, well, she was just unconscious, and then she woke Man. up later. Um, <laughs> she, when she woke up, she couldn't hear. All her teeth eventually mind. rotted, and they assume it's because of it. And she had a white streak in her hair, hmm. <laughs> which I assume cool. was from that, because she always had the white streak, as, for, as long as I could ever remember, when she was way too young to have a white streak, although I'm not so sure anymore. Uh, I got some highlights these days. Um, but... I always just picture it's like, uh, electricity. <laughs> I can't even know. I, think I know, you awful. just, I, you I would not want room, that to happen either. You can't either. be in a good location ever. So one day I was really bored and I was watching some obscure television show and I was like this lady and she got hit twice by lightning. 
two separate occasions. Yeah. How awful. Oh, yeah. there's this guy who's like a park ranger or something. He got hit by lightning seven different times. And this is like the first time his hair fell out and the second time his hair grew back or something like that. <laughs> oh. I, some, I think <laughs> there's some guy. I don't remember. I've heard, heard about like, someone getting hit seven times. But I don't remember if it was true or not. It's like That's in the Guinness Book of World Records. For is it yeah. yeah. I think, I, I think yeah. it's Sorry, like Sam. Alright, is this number 10? He had a picture of like, his, his big broad brim hat and it had like, this big hole burnt through it. Okay, light of a wavelength of 211 nanometers, which is how many meters? 2.11 times 10 to the negative 7th. Uh, it's shown on copper with a work function of 4.94 4. electron volts. Uh, what is the maximum kinetic energy of the electrons emitted from the metal? Now, does that mean that they all have the maximum kinetic energy? No. No. But what is the maximum kinetic energy that they could have? 0 0.9 electron volts. That's right, and it is one significant figure as well. So let's figure out why that is. Okay, so we want to know maximum kinetic energy. What do we know about frequency? We need to find frequency. So what is frequency here? Um, Same. Speed divided by wavelength, which is 1.4 times 10 to the 15 hertz. Okay, so if we have frequency, then, where's number 10? Okay, so then what do we want to do with that? Um, multiply the hertz times the Planck's constant. Okay. Times 10 to negative 15? Yes. And what is that equal? 0 0.9 electron volts. Does it really? You mean? Is it? 0.9. Well, it no. equals 5.8 okay. electron volts, but it's 0 0.9 after you do all the. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So the work function. So, what does that actually mean? That's the energy. That's what you need to. Wait, no, hang on. That's the energy that's hitting the metal. Well, yeah, that's the, the energy of the light. And what do you need? Um, 4.9. For. You subtract the work function. Right. So if you if you can get a maximum of that, and it's going to require this much to remove the electron, then the leftover is going to be how much energy an electron could possibly have when it goes. So what is that? You said 0.9? Yes. Because there's the ones we Okay. So if I pull and pull on the little kid, the candy, right, and I finally liberate the candy, Right, then all the force that I have left is going to be, you know, what wasn't used to liberate the candy. That would be measured in joules. Yes, and that would be. to have 13 quadrillion. I know. Volts. A whole lot of electron volts for some joules. Okay, so. Or we could turn into a calorie. We could. We could see how many calories I'd burn fighting my children for some candy. A calorie fun. or a chemistry calorie? Well, first the chemistry calorie, and then if it's still not like... I burned so many chemistry calories. I probably have burned a lot of calories in my day, keeping people from stealing candy. <laughs> Running around the house, give me that back. Okay, so just remember work function. Your metal has some electrons, you want to get them away. It requires a minimum amount of energy. Anything that is left after you get the electron away is um, going to be the maximum kinetic energy of any electron leaving the metal. That doesn't mean that every electron leaving the metal will have that much kinetic energy. They may have less. They can't have more. Uh, I yes. saw this quote from Michael Phelps once. He was like, people were asking him what sort of diet he had while he was training. And he's like, well, you can eat whatever you want as long as it adds up to 10,000 calories a day. <laughs> How awesome that would that be?
Mm -hmm. Just eat so much amazing food. If you had to swim 14 hours a day for it. How do you swim 14 work? hours a day? Mm -hmm. When do you have time to Like, your skin would be yeah, so like pruny. <laughs> like, that's so nasty. Yeah, like, like yeah. while you're swimming, it's just supposed <laughs> to be bad. I, mean, I think they must have to do some kind of uh, infusion while they're really? sleeping yep. to get that many pray. <laughs> like, there's, there's <laughs> camelback <laughs> things to do, like, soup. Yeah. Yeah, you puree. I don't know. He just That's drinks really like protein nice. shakes, so like nonstop. <laughs> yeah, I think I could probably eat like 3,000 calories a day and be really happy and huge. But, um, 10,000. That's, That's like the, the biggest parts. obese person I can think of. I think it's in the electricity one where we calculate um, an average boy's um, wattage. Oh, oh no, that was did the last one. Did we? In, yeah. Um, back here. I think, I don't remember which You boys was. use a lot of energy. I think he was working at you. So Michael Phelps' wattage would be like, a enough million. to power a small fan or something. Um. Or like a little race car. <laughs> like a remote control race car, not like a... Alright, is there anything else important that I want to say here before we... Okay, so with sound, what kind of wave is sound? Um, Transverse or the slinky thing. Long, longitudinal. longitudinal. Okay, so sound is longitudinal wave. So how would you say that scientifically? Slinky? Wait. It travels <laughs> in the parallel to the obs uh some of the no. Yeah. Navigation. Uh, oh, never mind. <laughs> no, it has an O. It doesn't it like o oscillation? Oscillation, yeah. It oscillates parallel. Oscillates oh. parallel to the, the property. Yeah, that. I know it. <laughs> okay, so what causes volume for sound? The amplitude. The speed amplitude. Of and what causes pitch for sound? Wavelength or frequency, being that they're inversely related, directly inversely related. That doesn't make any sense. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, and how about light waves? What kind of wave are they? Transverse. Transverse, yeah. Transverse yeah. wave. And what causes the brightness of light? Amplitude. Amplitude. What causes the... Um, <laughs> the color. <laughs> I think of another question. Energy. What causes the energy of light? Frequency? Frequency. Which would be wavelength too, right? Right, because frequency and wavelength. <laughs> but that also causes the color. <laughs> color, or if it's like radio, microwave, it causes the quality, I guess. Um, being that not every wave has color to us. Although animals can see colors that we can't. Cause I thought animals saw in black and white. Well, like, sure there are too. bugs that can see, um, like, oh ultraviolet or... Things that we like can see. Like How do we know that? That's so cool. I, know, I don't know. I know, like, so snakes. Like, I don't it's know heat. It's, it's, yeah. it's like a heat sensor. map. But, like, bees like, can, know, can actually make a picture see of and it looks colors really that we can't see, ultraviolet or whatever. So, what color would that be? Yeah, I don't know. We don't know. You can't <laughs> see it. <laughs> We've never seen it. It's, like, clear. But, but there are, flowers have different things that cause bees to know where to land and stuff that we can't see. But like you can photograph it using special cameras that I don't understand so that you can kind of see what a bee might be seeing and you can see differences in the petals that kind of point toward the good parts of the flower. That's um, cool. Yeah, so just because you can't see it as color doesn't mean no one can because some critters do. Hmm. But just remember, one flower just happened to do that by accident. That some like, yes, you would have to go. photograph a lot, a lot of flowers. <laughs> yeah, all accidental, undoubtedly. That yeah, that happens. All right, I'm looking. Um, does sound travel faster or slower if density is increasing? Faster. faster. Wait, no, 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 no. It, I remember it says in the book. Slower. slower. Does sound travel faster what? or slower if compressibility is faster? faster. I didn't say decreasing. Oh. What I thought was like, like so it can it can increase in like certain substances. Yeah, that is that is one of those times that you would hedge your bets and say usually <laughs> sound <laughs> travels 
slower it had, in like, a denser medium. But I thought it said it traveled. I thought it said light traveled slower in a denser medium. Like, have you ever banged on those aluminum bleachers? Yeah. And you're like, yeah. Choo, choo, choo. It sounds like the lasers. But yeah. usually, compressibility matters more than density. So, the reason that sound travels faster in water, even though it should travel slower because water is denser than air, is that water is less compressible than air. I know. So it can't. I said this last week and I will say it again now because or something. Yeah, this is kind of confusing. So should sound travel faster in a solid or a liquid? In a liquid. Usually. In a solid. Because a solid is less compressible, not necessarily because a solid is denser. I'm literally reading off the test because I don't want you to mess up. Except for water. Just quit that. Wait, so like, I won't get that one wrong. So it'll sound travels faster in a solid. A solid, solid. A solid, but like some solids, like it has the wood and the lead. It travels faster in the wood, but the lead's denser. Lead's denser, but but the sound travels faster in wood. Sound would travel faster in the thing that is less compressible. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, lead is malleable, so, so possibly. I don't know, you can't much squish wood. What's up? Mm. I've, heard, I've heard you're banging with it, like you're banging a nail in and you miss and it hits the wood and there's like a dent. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, mm. true. Or if it's like, because it says like, so wood or so like a log. It travels really fast in iron. Is that light or sound? I would sound. say sound, because sound. light's not going to travel very fast at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, through iron. <laughs> that is so true. Unless you have, what is it, like that Star Trek thing, a transparent aluminum or whatever. <laughs> okay, so what have I not asked you? Make sure you know how to do Doppler effect equations. We did a bunch of work function equations, that's not hard. Um, okay, here's one I want to go over. Okay, so... We have our two metals, oh, they're gone. Okay, we've got our two metals with work functions, okay? We've got big work function, and we've got little work function, right? So let me decide what I want to ask. Is the camera still on? It yeah. has 53 seconds left. Okay, so, Wonderful. say it fast. <laughs> if frequency increases, um, then um, which one Let's see. Speak faster. I can't. I have to think. Things stress her out. out. <laughs> She's getting stage fright. I do. I totally get stage fright. All right, turn it off and we'll continue. Is it dying because of battery or no? no it only. Our card is full. Bye, Sam. In thirty seconds. Twenty nine. Twenty eight.